Okay, we want to talk a little bit about stiffness on rising. Now, when we were in our 20s and 30s, we always, uh, you know, it was often that we would get up, we'd wake up, and boy, we were stiff in the right place. Uh, a little bit different when you're in your 60s and 70s, but that's not what we're talking about. Nah. We're talking about stiffness and rising. We're talking about uh, you're sitting at your computer for a couple hours, you're working away, you're doing your job, and then you try to get up, and oh, it is hard. Yeah. You and notice it the most. Yeah, you notice it the most driving in a car. You're after a, a typically a one or two hours drive, but it could be shorter. You you get out of the car and you can't straighten out. It takes you moments to rearrange the body. That's stiffness on rising, or getting out of an armchair after you've been reading for a while, but or even just getting away, getting up after you've been eating a dinner. Anyway, this stiffness is sign of inflammation this is telling you that throughout your body your joints and your muscles and your connective tissue is actually affected by inflammation stiffness on rising tied to old age at some point with some people they are no longer able to straighten out completely right like fingers like that never able to stretch their hands flat or or bent over or shoulder forward or hip forward or something like that that all is stiffness but the stiffness on rising is a sign of inflammation and where does that come from well inflammation is your body doing stuff and the stuff it's doing is it's doing repairs. It's trying to repair the body that is affected by the lifestyle. The symptoms of inflammation, swelling, redness, heat, pain, loss of function. And this it's the loss of function that you're experiencing here. The stiffness is the body doesn't want to move because it's busy trying to repair something. How do we get here? It's primarily nutritional when you eat food that is causing inflammation. The other way to get there is the environment being toxic. Right? Like if you have toxicity coming in, whether it's in your air, water, food, clothing, stuff you touch, stuff that touches you, all of that contributes to the body's inability to get rid of things that uh, that are limiting the function. The worst culprits are industrial age toxicity. Heavy metals are the worst. Lead, mercury, cadmium, arsenic, um, volatile organic compounds like dry cleaning fluids, uh, fire retardants, fuel additives, but also the lubricating plastics like Teflon type of things, things that are made to be smoother. Um, other things? Well, it's all in the class of plastics, things you smell. For example, the artificial fragrances that are added into dryer sheets or laundry powders or the, the air fresheners. Gosh, they should be known as the air sickeners. Anyway, all of that stuff is loading your body. Sometimes to the point where you become so inflamed that you're reactive. Right? So right now we're describing the reactivity in the body, but you could be reactive to the smells, right? Like you walk, I don't know, past somebody smoking a cigarette and it triggers you, or you walk past somebody who's wearing too much of perfume, or you walk into a space that has one of those uh, little pine tree shaped air fresheners and uh, you get a headache from it. All of that is a sign of the body's thresholds being limited. We have this concept of thresholds and triggers. Thresholds is how much can you stand, 
trigger is what is going to hit you that's going to trigger you into an inflammatory reaction. So going back to the stiffness on rising, most of that happens because of the food we eat. Wheat or gluten foods is probably the worst of it. Many people don't do well with dairy, especially dairy from northern breeds like Holstein, Jerseys, and those types. The, the more efficient cows. The less efficient cows, like buffalo, seems to be less problematic. <clears throat> so that's grains, dairy, and the third one is nightshades. Nightshade foods, which include potato, tomato, bell pepper, eggplant, and some more rare things like ashwagandha or goji berry. They are um, nightshades, and they produce certain specific alkaloids, like solanin, which is found in the potato skin. And that may trigger you into stiffness, especially stiffness of the joints. People tend to feel arthritic when they have excess of these, uh, of these solanins in the body. So, Martin, if someone is arthritic, is could this be a buildup of this stiffness on rising that we've been talking about? Well, it's related, right? Like the stiffness on rising is not only your joints, but all your muscles and connective tissue and everything else is now in this repair mode saying, I want a loss of function while I'm trying to fix you. Because you, you parked yourself for a while and it just sends the repair molecules everywhere. Right. So, so this would to... also be an indication that perhaps we're not resting and letting our body repair enough. Right. You know, relaxing, right? That whole right. Yeah, how our body much. repairs. Yeah, there's too much for the repair cycle to cope with. And if you're staying up too late and you're getting up too early and you're highly stressed and you're worried about all the things that are going to happen tomorrow or that happened last week that you haven't dealt with, then your body's missing out on that repair. No. Yes, you're, you're just doing an excellent job of describing the fight or flight, the not repair side of the autonomic nervous system. Right. Yeah. So if you have stiffness on rising, you need to look at your diet and you need to also look at your stress levels. Are you letting your body repair? Are you relaxing? You know, do you do any meditation or prayer throughout the day, you know, at some per point in the day where you just are quiet for 20 minutes, not just trying to push yourself to fall asleep? Yes, sir. All of that. Okay, so now we've talked about the problems. We've talked a little bit about what you can do about it. Are there any uh, products that we could take, like a superfood that might help us? Well, definitely number one is elimination. It's really super important to eliminate the industrial toxins. And I have found that zeolite is an excellent class of products. Ze zeolite in general, we have several products in that class. We have it available in liquid, in powder in capsules, plain or mixed with other things. And the other things that are really helpful are humic and fulvic acid because they improve the terrain in the gut. The biggest problem with this inflammation is created by the injuries we cause to the digestive system. And so we need to repair the gut. So what are the repairs? Well, Better well, just let me interrupt you for a second, just to show you that we do what we say. Here is a humic acid that I am, I am taking. <laughs> yeah, here's a bottle of liquid zeolite that I'm taking. Oh, and here's zeotox. Yeah, that's another liquid zeolite. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, we're we do what uh, what we tell you. Yeah, we we, we walk the talk. We do. Um, so All right. that's pretty interrupt you, but I, I wanted to no, no. people. Good. So that's the industrial toxins. You must get them out. It's sort of like when you try to button up a shirt. If you start wrong at the beginning, you will never get it match up. It's like that with these toxins. Until and unless 
you get these industrial toxins out of your body. You cannot get anything right because it's it's poached. What's the word? It's punching holes in everything. So I can. had an image as you were talking, and uh, in my experience. I've been in places where they have had a gas station and then the gas station is closed down. They've removed it and then they want to put something there and they've had to remove all of the soil because it was contaminated. Right. right? Yes. So if the soil of your stomach is contaminated or everything going to and from your stomach, right, your colon and everything else, then there's really not too much you can do because anything you actually do grow on that field where the gas station was is going to have a bunch of stuff in it that it pulled up from the soil that it shouldn't have, and it's going to be really bad for you. Right. So you have to clean up that mess. So absolutely, you've got to get your digestive system working right, get the toxins out of your body. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Two, you need to repair the gut. The thing that punches holes in your gut are, is gluten. So you, if you're broken, you need to stop eating gluten. There's no question about it. None. Just don't argue. Stop. And then use things that repair it. It is repairable. We have some products in that field. In the probiotic category, we have a product called Strataflora, which is a highly complex, well-designed product that helps to repair things in the stomach, in the small intestine, large intestine, all of that. Digestion and elimination, it's the one big process that needs to be helped. And we have other things in that category that will help. If you have high histamine, which is the, the molecule that gives you allergic reactions, we have stuff that's natural that helps you lower it. We have, uh, what else do we have here that's important? Essential fat, short chain fatty acids and essential fatty acids, two different things. The essential fatty acids, those would be the omega 3s and omega 6s. The omega 3s are usually short supply. So figure out how to supply that. We have either flax uh, on the plant side or we have fish oil. It's called polar power that we have on the um, fish oil side, but get whatever you can, wherever you can. Anyway, omega-3s. And then this other part, the short chain fatty acids, which are, uh, well, the most important one of them is called butyric acid. And we have an awesome product called tributyrin, which helps to compensate for the inability of your microbiome to make enough of this butyrate that helps to manage your cellular health. It's quite something. There are several podcasts in our podcast department on the site where you can go read, figure it out. It's, it's quite the process once you understand it. Cool. All right. Uh, so is there anything else you want to add to Stiffness on Rising? Magnesium is awesome. Okay. Let's not forget about it. Magnesium is the mineral that activates the parasympathetic, the repair. So when you put magnesium on, stiffness is reduced. The other thing on the food side, the most parasympathizing food in the nature is chlorophyll. So mm -hmm. you can use chlorella. You can use any other of the really green things. We have products that we have in our website, they start with Aura, A-U-R-A. -A. We have Aura Sil, Aura Green, Aura Fit, Aura Max. Those are all formulated to help reduce the inflammation that's running through the body. So, Martin, we've talked a lot about um, removing foods. We've talked a lot about adding uh, high-density nutrition. We've talked about how you can... Uh, detox. Uh, but so my question that, that I want to end with is uh, how about exercise, stretching, that sort of thing? Is that going to be helpful? Oh, dear. You know, if exercise were a drug, it would have it would be the most frequently prescribed item any, anybody would ever prescribe. The benefits of movement are just so 
incredibly important. Um, yes, move. If you have a sedentary job, get up every hour, stretch for five minutes, sit back down, get a rebounder. Rebounder, I have one here. It's an awesome tool. It helps you accomplish in 15 minutes what would take you 30 to 40 minutes without it because it intensifies the benefits. And the reason you're doing this is to move your body and stress your cells with movement against gravity. It's super important. And then, of course, the best type of exercise is it's called, what is it called? in interval training, meaning this, you push your muscles to maximum resistance for the amount of time it takes you to completely wear it out. Meaning this, you should take a weight big enough that in 10 reps, you can't make the 11th rep, repetition. So that should take you a minute or two to do the 10 reps Ah, I can't do one more. You stop and you breathe it out. And then hit the next muscle group, right? So do push-ups, pull-ups, curls, whatever you need to do. Just stress your body. Takes maybe 10 minutes out of your day. That's enough to actually make all the difference. Most of us would probably uh, eight push-ups and we'd be... (laughs) Funny story. A friend of mine, my age group, has a young son, and he's coaching boys that are 13 and 14 years old. And he said that he just took over as his coach. And he said that half of the 15 boys couldn't do more than two push-ups. He is just astounded at the horrible level of... It's our sanitary lifestyle. in In that age group. Yeah, yeah. It's... I have a friend who has a small dog and, uh, you know, we went for a walk and I'm watching the dog and the dog's exhausted. Yeah. And it's a young dog. It's not an old dog. And I thought this dog sits around all day and barely gets out for a walk or do anything or run around. And it's yeah. just, I'd never seen a dog that was just like young and I've walked a block. I can't walk any further and pick yeah, me up. It was done. Yeah. Was done, right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I can proudly say I, I do 20 push-ups every day. <laughs> Thank you. Good for you. All right. Uh, so I think we've come to the end of this. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you've got any questions, uh, you know, head in the group. And, uh, well, the only way you see this is by being in the group, so I don't have to tell you where to go. And, uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you.